Hi everyone, so welcome to part 9 uh, of our International Scale Modeler Techniques Guide. Um, today I'm going to be covering airbrushing techniques. I'm not going to go through every single uh, technique there is because we'll be here all day. I'm just going to cover the techniques required in painting this. Uh, it's our Airfix 148 Messerschmitt BF109. As you saw in the last part, I'd lost a canopy. Uh, I sent an email to Airfix the following day. And within five days, I had a replacement part for a charge. So thank you very much, Airfix. Fantastic customer care. You really can't fault them on that. So I've remaxed it up. It's glued back in position. Uh, it needs a little bit of primer on it just to get it to match the rest of the aircraft. To be honest, it won't really matter anyway. What I'll more than likely do with this one, because this is going to be open, you will actually see inside it. I'll spray this the interior colour first. I probably won't bother priming it to be honest because I won't need it once it's sprayed. Um, so I'll do that quickly before we go over to the spray booth. So today what we're going to cover, um, we'll cover airbrushing techniques. So today we're going to paint the underside, if I get the So we've got the RLM65, which is the light blue, hell blue. Which I'm going to use Mr. Hobby H67, which is actually RLM65. Um, so this is all the undersides and the side of the fuselage as well. Um, none of that needs masking up, I'll do all that just as it is because it's just underneath and along the side so all we're going to need to do is just spray along and avoid going as above this mark as such I'm not going to mask that, I don't like doing it I'll always put a base colour down and then mask to that so that's that, we've got that blue one that goes in the tail all the underneath, uh, along the front and the sides of the fuselage we'll then come along with the RLM02 which is a green grey um, and that is this colour here and we'll freehand all that I'm not going to mask this off just yet so we get all that down there on the tail, we'll leave the sides for now because we'll do that when it's masked up in the next part because in part 10 I'll cover masking uh, and then spraying over the masking as well so today we're literally going to get the paint on underneath leaving all the pre-shading showing through we'll get the light blue on the side as well again showing the pre-shading and we'll just freehand some of this grey green on the wings showing the technique I used before we come to masking and like I say after Christmas and New Year we'll come back and I'll show masking techniques and airbrushing over masking as well. So what we'll do is we'll move to a spray booth. I'm going to very quickly give that a coat of the RLM. Ooh, I can't remember the colour inside now. I've completely forgotten, but I'll figure that out. I'll spray it ready for us and then we'll come back and get some paint down. Okay, we're over in the spray booth. I've got my two colours. We've got the RLM02 and the RLM65. I just said on camera I was painting around this canopy, the interior colour. It's RLM02. I thought it was, but I couldn't quite remember. It's been such a long time since I've painted the interior on this, I've forgotten. Uh, it's dragged on a bit longer than I thought this, just with my own time not being as free as I thought it would. But we're getting there, we will get this finished. So I've got my cheat sheet of the camo there, uh, my paint, thinner, airbrush, etc. So what we're going to do, mix a bit up of the RLM65, which is the underneath colour and the side of the fuselage as well. So we're going to mix up a couple of mil of that. There we go, and we'll thin that approximately 50%. I'll move that out of the way, he's got to have it spilling paint at the minute. 50% with UMP thinner. That'll do nicely. Quick paint there. And that should be it. Got an unusual paint, Mr. Hobby. It doesn't always seem to be a time you get away with 50 50 most of the time. With Mr. Hobby, it can vary from paint to paint how much you need, but you can tell by the noise it makes when it actually starts to spray if it needs any more um, thinner because you'll hear it struggling rather than coming out nice and smooth you'll hear it almost struggling for um, the pressure to push it out so air booth on, nice little thing with this it'll hold my cheat sheet for me because it's that powerful that holds the paper great to test on the old uh, tissue paper, I always like to try and write my name and I know it's steady enough then that'll do me and you can also do other people's names as well if you want very uh, Mr. Cohen. Uh, so, like I say, underneath we're going to cover all this underside, including the tail section under the nose, and then we need to come around, looking at the cheat sheet there, cover all along the top and the sides, um, not going too high on the top of the fuselage. So, we're at 25 psi, paint's nice and thin as you can see. Um, yeah, we're at 25 psi, so I'm just going to start laying down the colour, the thin coats. As I always say, we're not trying to cover it in one go, just till you see you start getting wet enough. And then we go around to the 
anschauen. One thing to remember, the way I'm holding this currently is not the way I'd normally do it. And in fact, I am going to do it the way I normally do it. Because what happens is, we hold it underneath, you're spraying paint down onto your fingers, so if you move around, you're going to get paint everywhere. Fingerprints all over the shop, the lot, not what we want at all. So you can already see we're getting light misty coats already. It's just a case of building it up until the pre-shading starts to disappear. And we just want to leave a very faint hint of it being there. So don't worry about the sides, just get underneath them first. Don't worry about the front leading edges as well, we'll get those for the, the next colours. I'll show my little technique for doing that. So there's no need to mask those at all. Like so just keep going around. Do not want that paint thick. Make sure you get to all the little nooks and crannies by angling it all. As you see, we start coming back with thicker coats now. We really start to get some coverage on. So like I say, don't be worried about the sides, you get to those in a minute when we turn the aircraft around. Just come straight on the underneath. I also like to do on this little tail section here, because it's quite awkward to do at the top. See that one there is really starting to disappear now, so we move on to the other one. Make sure you get the leading edges and up in the glue. Now, I've always thought, and it, you can see it, to the naked eye, what the camera sees is different. On camera that looks really dark with shading. It's nowhere near as dark to my eye. Now whether I'm going blind, I don't know, but I don't think I am. So, although it may look quite dark, it is a shade or two lighter to my eye. There's one load of paint. So we'll do the same again. As you can see though, it is starting to disappear now the pre-shading. And all you want to do is just do it so you can just about see it. Because again, you know, if it's too little, it doesn't look right. If it's too much, it can look hard as well. Again, when you put a fresh colour cup in, check your paint again. Not as thin as before, so we'll put a little bit more in. That's why I use the thin line. I can spray a nice thin line easily. I know the paint's thin enough. I have no problem there. Always remember to pull it through enough. There we go. So as long as you can write your name. I always think it's thin enough. Right, because we've got a bit more in the colour cup, I'm going to chuck a cap on. Not that one, that's the wrong one. That one. Paint on the side. So as you can see now, it's really starting to disappear. We've got a bit more on the tail to do rather than the side now. Just build it up slowly. What we'll do as well when we come back. Uh, we get it all masked off. We'll start going around, we'll add some highlights, some fading, um, post shading. So we'll 
cover that in the next part as well. This is just basic airbrushing today. So at a distance of about three inches away from the model, I always spray at a high pressure. I know a lot of you guys say you can't because of this and that, but seriously give it a go. Um, I was speaking to Cohen the other day. I know he's struggling a little bit with the Valero model colour, uh, sorry, model air. Um, but I am literally fully down for air. And I just pull back for paint. So I'm always, always fully down for air. Every time I paint, I never half press on the trigger. It's always fully down for air. There we go. Just make sure that front section's good enough. I will concentrate on the back. So those tail parts. And now we just need to concentrate on the rear part of the rear fuselage. We'll go to the side a little bit now. If you get any overspray or spray a bit too thick, just cut to air and dry it all off before it gets in you. Uh, Rescribing is not the best underneath. I said I was testing it using different tools. I definitely found I prefer the um, trumpet describer of the Tamiya. Found the Tamiya a little bit too harsh. There we go. So once you're done, have a look around. If you see any areas that you think could do a bit more, just give it a, a light mist with a bit more distance. I'm probably six inches away now. Make sure your lead and edges are all done, and the wing tips. To do wing tips, I'll just turn, and the lead edges, turn at 45 degrees. It really is that simple. Same with the back. Say so, there we go. So looks about right to me. So what we'll do, we'll come back. We'll add some lighter colour in the centres, but a slightly darker blue where the pre-shading is, and then we'll add some mottled effects to make it look more warm. We'll do that in part ten once we've done the masking. Part ten will be a long part. I'll make sure it's at least 40 minutes long. Uh, today's going to be quite short. Not for any particular reason, just I want to try and keep it in usable sections for you guys. So this is just literally showing how I airbrush. So 25 psi, distance to three inches, um, 50, 50 to 60, 40 mix of thinner to paint. Um, you really do have to judge it yourself. But like I say, if you use my general rule of thumb, that you can spray a nice thin line. I mean, I don't know how thin I can actually spray. There you go. That's a 25 psi. Right down as thin as I possibly can. You know, my shot. So even at 25 psi, I can get pencil thin lines. So it's not all about the pressure. It's how well your paint's thin, as you can see. You don't need to get any thinner than that painting whatsoever. So, like I say, 25 psi for virtually everything. The only thing I'll drop my pressure for is outclads. Uh, I go down to about 12 for those. So, all we need to do now is the upper hat side of the fuselage. We'll literally go into the bottom line of where the canopies join the fuselage, and then we don't want to go any higher than that. So, again, we'll just get the base colour down where we need it. Top of the tail gets completely covered. Nice thin coat, it is quite a thin paint, so be aware of that. When you are painting, don't go on trying to put too much down at once. Obviously, you don't want to go too high because you don't want to be venturing into an area where this colour is not required. But also, you need to make sure you do go high enough. I 
you're going to have to break out this colour again. To match it all up. So right down to the wing roots this goes. Same on the other side. Just imagine, I'm just imagining an imaginary line right across the top of that canopy there. You can see where my paint's gone. Right, so there we go, all the sides done. Again, remember it looks a bit darker on camera, it is a bit lighter in real life. Uh, both sides done. Don't worry, if you do go over anywhere, you shouldn't be in your hospital pre shading or you're going to look a bit too thick on the paint. You can add it back in later with uh, post shading, it's not a problem at all. Um, just take your time, and don't rush it, and there goes my cheat sheet because the fan boost's gone off. Um, obviously, it's acrylic, so it dries nice and quick. I would probably leave this at least three or four hours before you start to mask on it. I have done it sooner with no problem, but obviously it's your hard work, so don't want you ruining that on account of me. You can see there with this area is a wet paint still. So you can come back and dry it with the airbrush. That's now gone. I think I've roughly covered everything we need. Of course, you know, you can always come back and add it back in. It's not a problem at all. Um, so there we go. There's the RLM. Uh, I'm going to put the lid back on. The RLM 65. All done. The light blue. I'm not sure how much paint we've got left. I'll have a look in a minute, so we'll just pop that down there. Yeah, quite a bit. We'll put that back in the colour cup. Oh, email. Excuse me. It's not on sound for some reason. I thought I could have sworn it was. So we'll just quickly clean the colour cup out, and then we'll get going with the RLMO2. So this is what I do for a quick colour change. This is what I do at the end of the day. Like I said in the last video, the only time I'll do a complete strip down is I notice a deterioration in the uh, airbrush's performance. If I'm changing colour or at the end of the day, this is all I ever do. No different for anything. Bit of tissue, bit of our UMP cleaner in there or whatever cleaner you use. Give it a brush around, give it a backflow. Ditch what you've got in the cup. Bit of tissue in there. Spray the remnants away in your cleaning pot. gone. Second go over, clean your brush off before you put it back in. Now let's get right down in that colour cup as much as I can. Back flow it again. Clean it off, spray the rest away, that'll be job done. There we go, one clean colour cup, if you can see right down there you'll see it's spotless. And that's all I ever do between colour changes, it shows just how well our airbrush cleaner works. So we've got the RLM 2 so generous amount of that, 50-50 again, so we're just about a mil, mil and a half in there. Again, we'll give it a good stare. Fantastic tool, by the way, for Tammy or all, Mr. Hobby Paint. Absolutely great. It does come with a little blue silicon base thing to hold the bottom of the tub. I think I've knocked it down the back of my airbrush boot just then, as you do. So, same again. We'll pop the lid back on that paint, save me knocking it over. Seems to be a bit clumsy today. Get the spray booth back on. There we go. My uh, cheat sheet back up where it was before. So, same before, pull your paint through, make sure you can write the game properly. Now, we've only got specific areas we need to paint this time. Uh, this is in preparation for our masking because when I show you quickly, 
It's all hard edge splinter camo. So we're just going to freehand these bits in, there and there. We're not going to do any of these yet because you look at the side profile, it's hard edge camo. There's no way in the world I'm going to be able to miss the blue. So this will be done once it's matched, which I'll show you in part 10. Um, so we're literally going to do these four bits. We're just going to look at them where they are, orientate the aircraft the way we want it, and spray them down. Uh, I won't even do the tail section just yet because it's lighter colour, it's right up against the uh, rudder. Um, and we need to mask that off first. So we're just going to do these four parts and then we're ready for part 10 next time, which will show the masking, uh, spraying over the camera, uh, uh, masking, and how we do the front lead and edges, which I'll show quickly now as well. So orientate your aircraft to match your colour collage sheet. Let me show your paints pull through again the way you want and it. We're literally going to pick a line, so we're going to go from paint line in just where you imagine that line to be so I imagine it across there like so just keep building your coats up nice and thin again do not want to lose that pretty shade if you can help it So I'm going to leave that one for now. Next one's here, so it's a point from the bottom of this in the form of V. So imagine where it is, have a look. It's not a steep an angle this time. I'm going to turn that a little bit so I can see better. So just keep a visual reference of where you're going. Once you to define that line, pick your other one, which goes from there right across. The point, and then just fill in the middle. To fill in, I always find better using circular motions. It's not as deliberate. I find it a little bit more forgiving. To where you actually need to paint down. And again, build up the coach just till the pre shading starts to disappear. And dry off a little bit of air. We'll go back to this one while that one's drying. Do. When we got all the basic pattern down, I'll go around the front and I'll show you how I do my leading edges. Somebody did ask, ask in one of my videos, how much one it was, how I do the leading edges. So hopefully you'll see this. If not, I'll go find the comments and I'll go back into this so you can read it or watch it rather. So we just want to do it until we start to lose it, which that looks about right to me there. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Next one is there this time. Next one is right on the edge, so we're leaving a little tip of green right on that edge, the dark green, sorry, the RLM uh, 71. So we need to go there. My forearm is going to go covered in paint. Then we pick the imaginary line of there. And we, go. And then we start to fill it in. Once you've got a nice base, the colour down, move on to another part, let that dry for a minute because otherwise you'll start getting runs. And then this one literally calls for up to the wing route, which we'll do freehand and we'll mask it off next time because that leads up to our um, 65, the blue cross. So we're just picking imaginary lines. I'm looking at panel lines to see where the colour changes, and I'm using that as a reference in. Once you get a good piece of colour down on that part, move away, go back to the one you did before. You're going to use the circular motions. We're just filling all that in. So there we go, nice to start to spray. And have a look at the other bits. I always find it best to spray something, leave it, come back and look at it with almost a fresh pair of eyes. I think you notice more then. Uh, well, I certainly do anyway, so I always like to paint something and then come back. There we go. So there's our base colour down. As you can 
to see probably a little bit more we can do there. Just on that single part. There we go, that's better. Just have a quick look around. Nothing worse than putting all your stuff away or cleaning your airbrush out and then you notice something thinking, oh damn, that's been sprayed. So always have a good look around. What we'll do, we'll spin it round and I'll show you how I do my leading edges. Really easy, really quick. So, leading edges, as you can see, you can see the blue underneath and the green on top. So the green literally stops at the lip. So what you do is you pick a point and you leave it at that point. You do not change it. So for me, when I'm looking at it, it's 45 degrees, so I can probably see that as I'm spraying it. What that does, as you're spraying down, you're only getting paint to that point on the leading edge. So you get your 45 degree cut off there. So I'm going to put it down so I can see, because obviously it's quite important that I can see what I'm doing. So I've got a 45 degree angle. And I'm literally spraying where that colour is. That will give us separation of the blue and the grey. As long as you keep it at the same level, don't move the aircraft. And remember, when you come back and do your other colours, that'll all stay there and you're fine. Again, because you're staying in a couple of spots, push your wear every now and then, and you'll see the paint dry right in front of your eyes. And there we go. So, I don't know if the camera will pick that up. It's a perfect separation from the blue to the green on those leading edges. There's no mask in there whatsoever. Just holding at that angle keeps it on there without separating it all. So it's really quick, really easy. So there we go. So we're ready now um, for masking. I'm just going to check that one area there. That goes across it. Like I say, if you do lose pre-shading, don't worry, you can add it back in with post-shading later. And by post-shading, all you're doing is you're adding a darker colour to your base colour here, and you go with the panel line, exactly like you do pre-shading, and uh, that'll give you the detail. But the pre-shading shows really well. You can see all the detail parts uh, showing up really nicely. Underneath, as I hit the workbench with it, pre-shading showing through really well. I'm going to put the airbrush down, because normally I'll go and paint this with the wrong colour. So that's showing through really, really well. Okay, so that's us for today. That's part uh, nine, is it, dealt with? Um, so, part ten, we'll cover all the masking, like I keep saying. Um, so, basically, that, that's my airbrushing technique. Nothing special, but keep to some key rules. Keep your pressure constant. Unless you need to lower it for some specific reason, I very, very rarely do. I always spray at a high pressure. The only exception is alkalides. Um, keep yourself at uh, the same distance. I spray at about three, uh, three inches away, roughly. Obviously, if you're spraying thinner lines, you can go in closer, but then people say you need to lower your pressure. I don't necessarily think you do. Um, with the trigger on the airbrush, I've always got it pressed down. If I grab one, I've always got that all the way down. Always, I never try and press it halfway or a little bit, it's always half down and then paint. It gives you one less thing to think about and concentrate on. So I'm always down. Paint, you know, you call back for your paint and what have you, and you're done. So, key to those key rules keep your paint thinned enough. That's the key ingredient to getting good paint work. I will admit, one of my best skills in modeling is painting. I love painting, always have and always will, whether it be brush or airbrushing. But airbrushing, I absolutely love it, and I know it's one of my best skills modeling. So I always look forward to painting. Uh, pre shading looks well on this, you know, following my key rules. And again, the leading edges, there's a nice soft demarcation from colour to um, colour, obviously. So, like I say, we're back in part 10, we'll get the masking done. So I'll just show quickly how we mask off these lines for the hard edge splinter camo. Uh, and then I'll show spraying over masking because with masking you don't want to spray over it too thick because it'll leave a demarcation line when you remove it. So you need nice thin coats over uh, when you're doing that as well. Uh, quite a bit of masking involved on this. I've built about four or five of these now, I think. One, two, three, four, four, I think. And there's a lot of masking to get those hard edges done, so it's quite time consuming. So that's probably the most laborious part of this aircraft, the splinter camo. But it's fairly simple. I like to say, if you get your airbrushing right, the pre-shading looks nice. We'll add a bit more post-shading, fading and blending and what have you later as well. But that's us for today. So I'll be back um, 
after Christmas, uh, after New Year, probably with part 10. I want to really get this done now because it's lagged on too long for me. Just things have got underway, but I want to get this done. We're nearly there now, probably another four parts, um, if that, probably. Uh, de covering decals, weathering, and what have you. So we're, we're nearly there now, it's not too far at all. So have a good Christmas. Uh, I'll see you in the new year. Paul Fantastic Scale Modeler. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.